Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, today I'll be talking about um, the parts of well, this bass guitar as from uh, a few observations and from a few requests from friends and upcoming bass players and uh, I'd like to make sure that um, uh, all of us understand what this instrument really is and what, what it's made of and uh, what each part does and its necessity in our play. So without much ado, uh, let's get to it. Now um, up here, I start from up here, we have this black piece of wood. This is called a headstock. Now a headstock uh, is made of made up of um, this mostly it, it, it uh, holds this in, in position these are called tuning pegs these silverish things you can see here these are called tuning pegs now moving on moving slowly up the, this part here this is called a nut this uh, piece of uh, plastic you can see here this is called a nut we'll talk about their parts also in uh, their functions in a while now from, from the nut Going all the way up here, up uh, here, if you can see this, up here, uh, this is called a neck, the neck of the guitar, from up here to down here. Now the neck is made up of um, uh, several parts also, as we are going to see. Um, looking at the guitar from this perspective, you can see there is a brown part here, and then there is another darker part here. This is uh, the this is just the rear of the neck, the rear wood itself. But up here we have something called a fretboard. Now the fretboard uh, is made up of a specific kind of wood, which may vary from a wide variety of wood, of pieces of wood. We shall see about it in a while also. Now you see uh, inside the fretboard we have the small pieces of metal that does are dividing the fretboard. These are called the frets. These ones, the pieces of, of metal, they are called the frets. Now they are subdivided in a very unique way, uh, such that if we go a little bit into the musical part of it, you'll see that uh, each subdivision represents a uh, a hundred cents of pitch so from here to here they all they, if you play the guitar from this position or from this position or from this position as long as you're within that range it shall give it uh, the same the same kind of sound uh, unless to the very perfect ear there you there you maybe get the imperfection but that's the function of the the pieces of metal that, that are called frets just have dividing to get a different pitch uh, across the fretboard. Now, coming down here, we have this joint here, as you can see. This makes the guitar build called a bolt-on neck. This neck is simply bolted on to the body. Um, so the, uh, there are other kinds of guitars, as you can see in this image that I'm going to show here, just in a while. Um, that one. So you can see the the, the for the neck through. That's what the neck through. The the whole neck, the piece of wood is going from up there down, all the way to the end of the body. So which makes the body have three pieces of wood for a neck through base. There is the upper part, there is the middle part, and then there is the lower part. Uh, but for this one, is a bolt-on neck, so the uh, neck and the body are two different parts. So as you can see, the, the body is simply one piece of wood, one big piece of wood. Now, going on 
to the to the to the body itself. This uh, the whole of this piece of redwood. This called the body, as you've heard. Now in the body we have several parts. Also, we have these black plastics. They have magnets in them, and in that case they make them uh, they make something called pick up these two. So from uh, this is called a neck pickup from the neck. As you have heard, we have called this neck, so this is called the neck pickup. And this one is called a bridge pickup. Why? Because we have this silver piece of metal here, which is called a bridge. Um, so its proximity, its closer proximity to the bridge makes it, uh, gives it the name a bridge pickup. Now down here, we have um, control knobs, or tone, tone control knobs. Well, the number of tone control knobs may vary, mine are three, because I have a passive bass, but if you have an active bass, you usually get from four going up. But it also depends on, on the type of bass that you, that, you, that you have. So mine, I have three tone control knobs. Now, going down here, we have an output jack, this part here. So this is where you plug in your cable when you want to play your bass and you want to make uh, you are playing hard or you want to hear what you're playing so this is this its function is called an, an output jack so and the kinds of jack that go in they are three quarter i think here yeah. such such kinds of jack that they are the ones that go in here whenever you want to play so um going behind behind here we have uh, this kind of it's, it's a stop anchor. It's there is one here and there is also another one up here. When you want to to well to hang your base on your body when you're playing, so you use such a kind of a thing. It's called a strap. So this is what you put on on these anchors. And then you can well hang your base on your body when you're playing. Now, uh, now going over to the functions of the parts that we have just discussed. Let's begin from up here. We have um, this headstock. So as you have seen, the headstock uh, just makes uh, some room for the accommodation of the tuning pegs. Well, the tuning pegs, they just adjust the tension of the strings. So the higher the tension, the higher the pitch. So the more you turn them, the higher the pitch you get. For example, Let's listen if I hope you can hear this string. So whatever you do with this, they adjust your pitch, the pitch of your string, of your open string to be specific. So that's their function of these tuning pegs. Well, tuning pegs may come in different uh, uh, types and uh, sizes. The flower-like tuners that you see in fenders they, there's also that kind of tuners and then there are these which are quite common in a lot of bases. Now you may hear about ultralight tuners. Well, ult being ultralight means um, there's something we call neck dive. Well, neck dive means if you, if you have uh, your base on your body, uh, for example, if, you're, if you put it in a plane position like this, let me just demonstrate you know what if you put it in a playing position uh, neck dive means naturally your base will not balance like this it will tend to hang down like this which is really not good it will not it will force you to work your left hand into doing things that well mostly you're not supposed to do as a bass player you will always struggle to Put your bass up like this and also you struggle struggling to play so that's what is called a neck dive neck dive forces the bass down naturally the bass should remain like this like that without you doing anything it should remain like that so with the ultralight tuners sometimes tuners are a factor when it comes to the weight of the guitar so to prevent neck dive maybe some custom bases you may find that they use the ultralight tuners now, uh, moving on, we have something here we call we called a nut. This nut is simply used to maintain the action, maybe I would say the action or the spacing between the, the fretboard and the strings. 
as you can see down here there is a space uh, i don't know if you have something maybe i can demonstrate it let me demonstrate this knife you can see the knife is able to get in between the strings right there perfectly so they're supposed to remain that string that space sorry between the string and the and the fretboard for you to be able to play any note there otherwise without that space you won't be able to play something it will just be a bunch of noises and it's not impressive uh, so something i've forgotten right here we have um, a truss rod cover it just simply covers the the one end of the trust rod there just above end of the, of the trust rod the trust rod when maybe i may not be able to demonstrate because i can't i can't really remove it from the guitar but uh, i'll show you an image of a trust rod now trust rods they are meant to naturally wood cannot uh, support the weight of this or the tension that the strings put on the guitar on this on this wood piece of wood so um the truss rod is meant to help the wood to counteract the tension that uh, these strings put on the wood. Otherwise, it would simply break and it wouldn't be able to withstand the weight, the, the tension. So what what it does if um, if you look at this guitar, the tension that the strings uh, put on the on the wood is forcing it to go this way, but the truss rod is forcing it to go the other way. Uh, which kind of create, create some kind of balance for you to be able to have uh, uh, these strings flow just floating just enough above the fretboard for you to be able to play notes on the guitar. Now, um, from the tra uh, the kind, there might be a, uh, some kinds of truss rod. Maybe one that I really know of is a, a double action truss rod. A double action is meant to 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 perform two kinds of functions there is neck relief and then there is the other of adding the neck tension now in neck relief maybe you put uh, you put in too much um, too much you you tighten the truss rod too much so it means that you you are your strings the, the tension between your strings and your truss rod is not really balanced so that's that's when, when you do a neck relief it's just uh, uh simply untightening the truss rod a little bit so so that you can give uh, the strings a little bit of a push when it comes to offering that kind of tension so moving on from the truss rod we head over to the body the body up here we talked about um we talked about these pickups now if maybe from the kenyan education system if you've had a, in physics maybe i think it's form to physics if you remember when you vibrate uh, or when you vibrate something in a in a magnetic field it produces an electric current well, that's exactly the same principle that is used here so when you vibrate a string over this piece of piece of magnet is it, it produces a, an electric current which is transmitted outside this jack so um, the types of pickups may vary from different the different sizes different makes might need to do a little bit of homework to find out which one best suits your tone so these ones right here they suit my tone quite a lot and i like them so these are super pickups 
Now, um, moving over here to the bridge, I hope you can see clearly. Now, um, on the bridge, we have uh, small items we call the saddles. This one, from, you can see this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now, um, the saddles is where the strings sit on, and the saddles allow you to to adjust the action, the action of the of the strings. The action of the, the action of a string is the space between between the string and the fretboard. This space, this space right here, between the string and the fretboard. That's called the action. That space. So without that space. Um, you simply won't be able to play any note because the strings need some space to vibrate and produce whichever frequency that you want. So without that space, you simply get a, a fret buzz most of the time. Something like a, if you if you if you if you had a guitar that is not adjusted, where well, you just know uh, something is not right there without fret buzzes. So this. These pieces here, the saddles, they allow you to adjust the action of the string. That is the space between the fretboard and the strings. Okay. Now moving on, we have um, these tone knobs. Now tone knobs, the number of tone knobs may vary on the kind of guitar, which uh, takes me to another subject. Uh, types of guitars we have two major types we have active and passive guitars bass guitars to be specific this one is a passive guitar this is an electric uh, electronic cavity so usually active guitars they usually come with another cavity either up here or up here depending on the kind of guitar or is it whether it's custom or it's a mainstream they come with another cavity for either a 9 volt battery or 18 volt battery system so what act what passive guitars do they have a permanent magnet this magnet uh, simply can generate it it always 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 has an active magnetic field on it so there is a there is a magnetic field on it 24 7 uh, so what they do they 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 their magnets are really strong uh, for uh, for a long period of time so any time you want to play it you can play it without needing to have a, a bat well with active bass guitars well they have um non-permanent magnets so all what they have are coils as you remember in physics you run a little bit of an electric current to magnetize something so they generate a weak magnetic field not very weak by the way a weak magnetic field just enough to detect the vibrations of a string and uh, uh, after after getting the, the vibration of the strings, they have something we call a preamp. A preamp um, is simply, just as the name says, a pre-amplification. So what they do, they take the signal, depending on the type, on the type of uh, preamp that you have, uh, maybe cleans up the signal and then uh, amplifies it before it goes before it goes out uh, uh, to the mixer or to the combo or whatever that you're using to listen to the to the bass as you're playing. Um, now, active bass guitars do come with several knobs. As I said, the number of knobs uh, uh, varies from the type of bass. Active bass guitars mostly do come with a minimum of uh, three, no, sorry, four knobs, which means that it has a master volume, uh, a pickup selector. Or a pickup balancer, a bass tone control, and a treble tone control. Now, with a with a bass tone control, as the name suggests, they have a ability to boost or cut. That is to add to the to the mix either a much more more depth or reduce the depth or the treble, the high pitch, the high frequencies. You can either add or reduce but with the passive bass you can only reduce you can only cut but you cannot boost so that's where the purpose of the preamp comes the preamp only offers the ability to 
boost certain frequencies but with this one you can only you can only cut the frequencies as on awesome. this one it has a uh, three uh, tone controls this this tone here this uh, tone control knob here controls the volume of the the neck pickup so when i uh, when i put it on uh, i get a, a much deeper and fatter tone and when i reduce it and leave this one on i get a more crunchier and a more brighter tone as compared to this one this one is simply controlling the high frequencies that's all it does either add the high frequencies or reduce so i cannot boost i can only cut or just make them hard just bring in the presence that's the much that they can do so for active bases you may find a minimum of maybe sometimes four sometimes five or even six um, the kinds of knobs do vary you may find a uh, one with five knobs master volume pickup selector bass mid frequencies and treble controls those are five knobs so that's basically it when it comes to active bass guitars uh, and permanent magnets most of the times and with a, and a preamp in them with the ability to boost frequencies uh, that's pretty much it with the uh, active guitars this one is a passive one as you as you have seen and maybe as you have heard in some of my covers sometimes you may maybe find some frequencies that are unusual on passive guitars but I have some stuff I use that uh, makes me uh, give me the ability to boost those frequencies so that's pretty much it with the uh, the parts of a bass guitars. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be willing to answer those questions. So, thank you very much, guys, for watching and I hope it helps someone. Thank you.